Hey friends, intimate lovers of God. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2, Yahweh says to Israel, I have stretched forth my hands <clears throat> all day long to a disobedient and gainsaying people who walk after their own ways, after their own thoughts. I have stretched forth my hands all day long. This is always his posture. And what is he saying? Come unto me. And this was a religious nation. This was the nation of Israel. This wasn't an unbelieving nation. This was the nation of Israel that was in covenant with him for relationship. And he's saying, I am, I've stretched forth my hands all day long. They lost intimacy. They lost intimacy with the Lord. And of course, we see that in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. My people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, the river of grace flowing from the throne. And they've hewed them out cisterns broken cisterns, which can hold no water. When I asked the Lord that many years ago, he spoke immediately and said, the broken cisterns are the form and structure of religion that kill intimacy. They lost the simplicity of intimacy. I have stretched forth my hands all day long unto a disobedient and gainsaying people who walk after their own ways, not my ways, which are the ways of righteousness, holiness, and peace. The way of righteousness is coming to know his love for you and being drawn by that. The way of holiness is totally setting yourself apart to him in the sanctity of that relationship. And the way of peace is in the very holy of holies where You've come into peace with him and you walk in the way of peace and restoring other people into that relationship. He speaks of in Isaiah, the way of peace they have not known. And so the father says, I stretch forth my hands all day long. And that posture is still the same today. He's always, he is love. He is love. He can't change who he is. He sh I've stretched forth my hands all day long. I want intimacy. I am love. I want to pour out my love. Deuteronomy, I think it's um, 33, 27 says, um, God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. So what is the refuge? His hands. The refuge is his hands. That's the secret place. It's the secret of his face. And underneath his hands are the everlasting arms. This is a word the Lord gave me many, many years ago. But see, in Psalm 89, verse 14, it says, Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. See, these are his hands extended out to us. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come into my hands. I will care for you. I will keep for you. I will keep you. Psalm 89 verse 13 says, Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is your hand. High is your right hand. He's presenting his hands. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of your throne. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. It's his hands extended out to us. And he's saying, 
come unto me. Come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden through your religious, empty religious stuff that can't bring you back here. Your broken cisterns, which can hold no water, it can't hold the power of my love. It only flows into this garden of intimacy. Or you just come. You lay it all down and you just come. You're just drawn to my love. You see what happened in the garden? They partook of the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. What does that mean? They entered into free will. Choose the good is this love relationship with the Father. Evil is to go our own way, the way that seems right unto man, but in the end leads to death. And Yahweh said to them in the garden, what did he say? He said, they've become like us, knowing good and evil. You see, but the Godhead, here, here's love. Now, herein is love, that you know both, but you only choose the good. See, let us make man in our image. First, man had to partake and to choose. And then to enter back into the love, that love is to surrender the will of going our own way and only choose the good. That's what it means to be like God. To know them both, but only to choose the good. But they chose the evil way. And what happened? They said, we're naked. And God said, who, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? See, they heard a voice. They heard a lie and they believed it. They weren't naked. They weren't naked of his love. They believed the lie. And then a veil of shame came over them. They were ashamed, it says. That's the first veil. That's the first veil we must pass through is the veil of shame. To step through into holy places, to pass through in the way of righteousness where we put on the garment of righteousness, and no longer are we ashamed before him. We're accepted in this love. We know this love. They have not known my waves. I've stretched forth my hands all day long to a disobedient, gainsaying people of who do not know my ways. They walk after their own ways. Who told you you were naked? It was the lie. It was believing the lie. If nobody's figured this out, the devil, the devil is in religion. <laughs> His voice is there all over the place. And there's plenty of messages to put you in shame, isn't there? And I've preached some of them, you know? That's the first veil, the veil of shame. What removes the veil of shame? His mercy. It says, you don't have to do anything. I paid the price, just come back in. You're accepted. Stand in this righteousness knowing you are loved, an unconditional love. Who told you you were naked? The second veil 
and the tabernacle is the veil of reproach. It is that voice that says, there's a separation. Did God really say, is he going to protect you? There's this veil of separation, believing the lie that God won't deliver you. And then what comes in? Fear, right? There's fear. Perfect love casts out fear. These two veils are destroyed. It speaks of in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 6. In this mountain, Zion, the Lord of hosts, who is Jesus, shall make unto all people a feast of fat things, of wines on the lees, a feast of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees, well refined. What is that? The Lord's Supper. The bread and the wine, the mercy and the truth, the fellowship of the secret the secret of his face to come back into his hands. Mercy and truth shall go before his face. Where we come back into his care, where we are the apple of his eye. In this mountain with the Lord of hosts, make unto all people a feast of fat things, of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, wines on the lees, well refined. And he will destroy the face of the covering, the shame. Cast over all people, that's the first veil. The face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil spread over all nations, the reproach. Hearing that voice of the enemy, the lies and believing it. The mercy removed the veil of shame, the spirit of truth shining upon us removes the veil of reproach. So we can enter into the holiest of all. As we abide in the holy place and allow the lampstand, the seven branch lampstand seven spirits of God to fully arise upon our heart and our soul where we surrender our soul to this love. We lay down our will. We entered into free will. Now we willingly lay down our will and only choose the good to be like God. They have become like us knowing good and evil. But to be like him is to only choose the good. It's the surrender of the will to become one. The surrender of the self-will to enter into the will of oneness. Jesus said, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden from trying to keep the law of doing all these things to come into a relationship. Woe unto you lawyers who have taken away the key of knowledge, simply that God, his love is enough. They've taken away the key of knowledge. Luke 6.52, woe unto you lawyers, for you've taken away the key of knowledge and you entered not in. And those who are entering in, you hindered because you said you got to do something. This is the religious way. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. There, here his hands are again, outstretched. Today, if you will hear his voice, today, if you will hear his voice, come unto me and you'll find rest. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest for your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. See, these, this rest is found in these 
eternal paths, which are mercy and truth, which are the Father's hand. Are the Father's hands. His hand shall lead me, his right hand shall hold me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. It's the, that word for easy is the Greek word krestos. It's the same word used in Romans chapter 2, verse 4. The goodness of God leads thee to repentance. It should be translated, my yoke is goodness. It just seems unsensical. But if you get the revelation, it makes perfect sense. My yoke is goodness, and my burden is light. Let's step out of religion and come to his hands that he stretches forth to, to us all day long. Come unto me. Come unto me and find rest for your souls so that you can surrender the will and be like us, knowing good and evil, and only choosing the good. The will of oneness. Shalom, shalom.